Hi, welcome to your second bioinformatics assignment. The goals of this assignment are to look at the genes and the genomes that encode the proteins that you looked at last week. We want to identify genes that encode laundry detergent enzymes. We're going to distinguish genes from genomes, and we're going to determine which strand of the double-stranded helix encodes the enzymes. This assignment uses the same table you worked on last week, but there's been some new rows added. Now you want to use this locus tag, and you want to search the GenBank database, and you want to search the Gene database. At the top here gives you some information to fill in the first couple rows of that uh, Excel table. Scroll down to the Genomic Regions, Transcripts, and Product section, and this is called a Genome Browser. And the line in green represents the gene. If you scroll over, you'll get some information about that gene, what it's called, what it does. The RNA transcript is shown in red, and the protein is shown in black. If you want to get a sequence of it, which you do for your homework assignment, you want to click on the FASTA file, and this will give you a FASTA sequence of that gene. So these are the nucleotides that encode that gene. Go back to the genome browser, and now we're interested in finding more about the genome of this organism. So if you click on the organism, first you get a list of the complete lineage of that organism and what it is. But in particular, click over on the genome section. At the top are several uh, links for downloading the sequence, either the protein sequence or the genome sequence. Now different collections of this organism has been sequenced. So this organism, Bacillus listiniformis, has been sequenced several times. And that's shown under this all genomes for the species. And that's 22 times. If we want to see that, we're going to click on this list. And this will show all the different genomes, what's the name, what the strain is, uh, shows what their sequence is, how many times it's been sequenced, where it's been sequenced, etc. And interestingly, the different strains have different genome sizes. And if we look under the size uh, and click on this, you'll sort by size, and you can see some of these genomes are 4.0 megabases in size, and others are quite large, 4.5 megabases in size. So you're going to use this information together with the uh, number of proteins to fill out uh, some more tables on your uh, Excel tree. Now before we get to this next section, I want to digress a little bit and talk a little bit about double-stranded DNA. Now here's a single strand of DNA. What's important are the ends are different. The five prime end has a phosphate, three prime end has a hydroxyl. So the directionality with which is read is important. Just like in English, we read words from left to right. Enzymes read DNA from five prime to three prime. And the directionality is often shown by an arrow. Now if we write the other strand of DNA, we write the complementary strand using the A to T, C to G rule. We find that the three prime and the five prime ends are anti-parallel. They face opposite directions. Think of Watson and Crick as, as two long snakes that are entwined around each other, but head to foot. One head in one direction, one the other, but entwined in a helix. Now if we take this Crick strand, this lower strand, which is reading in this direction, and we put them, make them both read in the same direction, we can look at the DNA like an enzyme would, all in the 5 to 3 prime. DNA encodes proteins using a triplet nucleotide codon. So each three nucleotides encodes a different amino acid. If we look at the amino acids that would be derived from the top strand, and we look at the amino acids from the bottom strand, we'll see that they're different. They're different sequences. So what this means is that the double-stranded DNA can encode one set of proteins on one strand of DNA and a different strand of proteins on the other strand of DNA. Return to the genome view of the organism. Click on the representative genome link. Scroll down down to the, near the bottom of the genome region and click on the graphics link to see the genome browser. This image represents all 4.2 million bases of the genome. The little green bars represent different genes. A few of them are marked for your orientation. Now the scale allows you to increase the size of the genes. And as you do, the green genes are replaced by red transcripts. Notice, though, that the different transcripts have arrows pointing in different directions. Sometimes they'll point to the right, sometimes they point to the left. This shows what strands are being transcribed. If the arrow points to the right, the Watson strand is being transcribed, and when the arrow points to the left, the Crick strand is being transcribed. So search the genome, use the locus tags, identify the genes that flank the detergent enzymes, 
and use that to complete rows 19 to 23. Remember, transcription from the Watson strand is represented by the right-facing arrow, and transcription from the Crick strand is represented by the left-facing arrow. That's it for now. Good luck with that.